Hello, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man video. Uh, we are playing Green Black Rock once again, and uh, this time our opponent is playing uh, Absan, uh, which uh, is a very similar deck to our uh, our deck. Uh, essentially, playing white for Sea Rhino, Lingering Souls really being the main attraction, um, as well as a uh, path to exile, I suppose. Um, Sprint's running, leading off with a Shambling Vent, uh, that's also another upside I suppose, is you can play Shambling Vent, um, which is a good man land. So we've got a Removal Heavy Hand, which isn't too bad, and we've got a Confidant which can draw us some cards, but uh, we may be in need of some threats. Uh, our opponent plays a Confidant of their own, I'm just going to push that here, and then the uh, Follow up with a confidant of our own. That's internal draw scavenging news, which is nice. Uh, Pump plays Liliana, minus two is it. So, uh, yeah, that's not great for us. Uh, early Liliana clearing our board. Uh, we've only got one other threat. So, if our opponent can deal with the scavenging news, we might be in pretty uh, bad trouble. So yeah, our opponent has abrupt decay for scavenging ooze. Could exile the creature and gain a life, but not in a good position. Um, draw a Tarmogoyf, which is nice, but our opponent can minus two Liliana and kill that. Or may have some other form of removal, potentially. Just gonna pitch a land here to Liliana. Okay, he's got Lingering Souls. Um, so I push the lingering uh, one on token. I'm gonna try and kill the other one and then attack Liliana. Uh, but unfortunately, our opponent does have the answer to the Tarmogoyf, uh, irritatingly. So uh, not in a great position. We've got Treetop Village though, so we can attack at Liliana. Uh, but unfortunately, our opponent has a scavenging news. And there are a few creatures in the graveyard that he can get through. So I'm going to go go for the attack, uh, if the opponent wants to trade their scavenging ooze, I suppose that's at least a somewhat reasonable position, but uh, I'm definitely not feeling great about our position in general. Uh, opponent takes the attack and just lets his Liliana go down to one. Flashback of Lingering Souls. Play Grim Flayer, uh, which was a 4-4, but he can use his scavenging ooze to uh, prevent us having Delirium, which is a little frustrating. And yeah, Scavenging is basically taking over the game. Liliana is uh, pretty much out of control and uh, it's not looking great for us. Uh, opponent drops the Siege Rhino. I think we're going to be dead very shortly. Draw Liliana, but um, that's not going to be good enough. So, uh, yeah, that wraps it up. Uh, we are done. Um, yeah, the early Liliana really was what wrapped this one up. Uh, able to deal with all our threats, and Liliana on the board was uh, too much to deal with, unfortunately. So uh, let's go to game two. See if we can fare a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to be in the play here. Uh, this hand is somewhat awkward. Um, so yeah, we don't have any green mana, but we also don't have any green spells, interestingly. Uh, we've got Flaying Tendrils, which is coming out of the sideboard, primarily to deal with Lingering Souls tokens. Um, which isn't perfect, but we can go with this. Oops, sorry, I skipped through that. Uh, right, so we thought sees we see our opponent's hand is Fatal Push, Elspeth, Sun's Champion, which is quite an interesting uh, top end there. Uh, that will be particularly scary at the end. So yeah, double Fatal Push, Siege, Rhino, and Elspeth. Uh, he also had a Dark Confidant. Uh, I choose to take the Confidant. Um, I mean, Flame Tendril does kill it, but that's not the ideal situation. So I really don't want him to sort of gain ahead with that. 
uh, and I'd rather save the tendrils for, um, for lingering souls tokens if possible. So yeah, things aren't looking great. Uh, kind of need to draw some more threats because uh, at the moment our opponent's got answers to these two confidants. So play goes caught. We're going to run out the confidant, which you know Uli will be met with a fatal push. Draw a fatal push of our own. Play the second confidant, which also is going to get a fatal push. Tarmogoyf comes down and Overgrown Tomb. And things aren't looking great for us. We found a green source in Treetop Village, which is good, but our opponent's got some good top end threats that are uh, coming closer. We're going to see Siege Rhino here. So, uh, yeah, I can fail. I fail push the. The Siege Rhino, um, uh, using the Ghost Quarter to get the, the Revolt, um, and then, yeah, as I say, Fatal Push the Ghost Quarter, so we've got a tar and then we draw into a Tarmogoyf, so uh, we've got like a Tarmogoyf stalemate going on. So, better position than we were in, but uh opponent is pushing towards that Elspeth that we saw earlier, which is a bit of a concern. Run Dark Confidant out here, which uh, is a good draw. I see my opponent is light on the removal spells at this point. But uh, he's about to drop uh, Elspeth. It's going to be a big problem. So he puts three soldiers into play. So this is going to be a tricky one, finishing that off. Draw into a couple of lands, which it's not entirely what we were looking for. Very nice with Maelstrom Pulse would be very useful here. Just to get rid of the Planeswalker. So the Liliana, which forces us to sack. Um, I keep the Tarmogoyf. Well, I suppose it might be an argument for keeping the Confidant there, but uh, isn't overly relevant as our opponent also has an L a uh, Path to Exile, which is a little annoying. Uh, the one good thing we can say about our position is uh, we do have this flame tendrils which can get rid of these uh, soldier tokens, but it's kind of an issue uh, without any threats in hand. So we wipe the board here. I'm going to activate Treetop Village to kill off Liliana. I'm just going to make three tokens. We get Maelstrom Pulse off the top, which is nice. But now we can kill off the Elspeth and drop the Tarmogoyf. So we are managing to uh, drag this back somewhat. Uh, I certainly thought about conceding shortly after the Elspeth came down, um, but we have done a fairly good job of getting ourselves back into this game. Um, Certainly Maelstrom Pulse helps a lot there in terms of uh, getting rid of the Elspeth. Attack for five here. Opponent has a Maelstrom Pulse. Didn't attack there. I assume that was a misclick. Oh no, he's... I guess he's holding back his soldiers. So I don't just eat them up with the treetop village, I guess. Um, I don't... Um, yeah, I suppose that kind of makes sense. Um, I don't know if I wouldn't want to just put more pressure on my life total if I was my opponent. Um, so yeah, unfortunately we seem to be drawing dead. I opponent draws a scavenger use, which is pretty good. We can play a Grim Flayer, but it's uh, well in our opponent's hand uh, abilities to uh, get deny his delirium and also grow his uh, scavenger use to uh, a fairly substantial size. So we're going to take five here. Oh, six, seven. Oh, I think he did. He have lethal. And we can get this with eight, eight, uh, and then he has the siege rhino to follow up, which finishes us off. Um, so yeah, not 
the match uh, that we would have wanted. Uh, I think, yeah, our opponent kind of came out of the blocks too quickly in the last game. Uh, this game, I feel like we held our own pretty well, and uh, we almost came back from that Elspeth Suns champion pretty nicely. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, our deck didn't really want to play ball, and uh, we ended up drawing uh, less well off the top of our deck than our opponent did. Us, abs, in terms of Abzan versus Green Black, uh, I mean, there are upsides and downsides. Uh, Lingering Souls is very good in the format at the minute, as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, very good against things like Death's Shadow, um, just because there's a lot of targeted removal around at the moment. So uh, being able to go wide and have multiple creatures on the board uh, can be difficult. Also, there's not a lot of flyers around, so you can often get in in the air. So uh, Lingering Soul is definitely a good reason to think about it. Seed Rhino is okay, um, but uh, I've, I've seen some Abzan lists not even run the Seed Rhino. Um, so I don't know, um, you'd have to test that out to see how good it is in the current format. Uh, obviously good, it is a good creature, but uh, I'm not sure if it truly stands up to some of the other th creatures that are running about. Um, doesn't fend well against a Gurmag Angler or or Death Shadow, etc. So I'm, I'm not sure how how good it is in that sort of scenario. Uh, top end Elspeth is uh, pretty cool. Um, I don't know if that's a common play, but uh, yeah, that seemed to work pretty nicely in this game. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, interesting deck. Uh, variant that I might be interested in trying. But uh, I think, yeah, upsides and downsides to, on, on both ends, I guess. We get access to Ghost Squad, they get access to Lingering Souls, I think is the is the main difference really.